Our next season will be on metaphor and myth and what Lewis's uh, perspective on those things are and how useful they are. Um, and I really believe that the idea of myth might be something we need to recover and understand better. This idea of myth probably has a bad rap and then anything that's called myth gets associated with it and we discard it. And I think if we were to understand how Lewis sees myth, we would be able to do evangelism better and uh, communicate the gospel to our world better. I do think that myth gets a bad rap. We, we think of it as something sort of scary, you know, uh, that, that ancient people uh, um, used um, and that it's it sort of inherently idolatrous or something like that. But it, it really is just an ancient uh, genre. It is, it's, it's a fictional um, story meant to help us understand something about the reality that we experience. And Lewis is certainly not the only, even the only evangelical who would say that some of the stories that we get in the Bible just look clearly mythological. Uh, this isn't a new phenomenon for Orthodox Christians to say, hey, what kind of literature is this? We really should try to know what kind of literature it is so that we can know what kind of truth it's telling. You know, Jesus, he, he says, is the myth that came, became fact. And he believed that in Jesus's life, um, all of the genres uh, uh, and all of the all the stories in the Old Testament, which um, are not historical fiction by any means, but but tell history in in, in the context or, or by the means of different forms of literature. Well, well Jesus Christ comes along, and, and all of this ancient literature is fulfilled in Him. What really motivates us to be good isn't ideas; it's stories. Lewis talks about this in The Abolition of Man, where he says if we really want to get people to develop morally, we have to build chests in them. And the way to do that is to teach them what are called just sentiments, uh, to teach them that there are certain things in life that are really good and enjoyable and certain things in life that are really not. So myth, any kind of story, any kind of poetry, great films, great art, great myth that appeals to the imagination motivates us to be better people in terms of those just sentiments. So now when you talk about how is this helpful in a person, say, in their own Christian life, and if we do something wrong, we come to a mystical moment where we can either um, repent of that wrong or to live with ourselves, we rationalize and justify the wrong and it leads to a kind of moral blindness. In fact, we can have all kinds of rationalizations set up that cover our commitment to anything that would be Christian. So if I've got this, this veneer over my soul, this shell over my soul, it's not going to let anything get in because I have, I have compromised. Lewis says it's like uh, we have these watchful dragons who are in front of our soul that are going to deflect anything that's coming in. And Lewis asks the question, how do I get past the watchful dragons? And he said, sometimes story gets past the watchful dragons. Uh, the depictions, the metaphors, the similes, the analogies, and, and, and the stories themselves. Uh, you know, Lewis and Tolkien, one of their ongoing points of conversation is the relationship between the true story of scripture and the real world and uh, what we might call myth, um, mythopoetics, the making of myths, the telling of myths. And it was actually a conversation between Tolkien and Lewis on this subject that led Lewis to become a, become a Christian. And Tolkien actually wrote a poem about that uh, called Mythopoeia, in which he references that conversation because Lewis, while still an unbeliever, he said, myths are lies breathed through silver. And Tolkien said, no, <laughs> there are elements of the true story that come through all myths and, and, and we can glean in good, good stories, the one true story that has found its ultimate statement in the story of the gospel. Well, and I think that's one of the, the binding threads through all the episodes that are going to come out this season of Lesser Known Lewis, which is to say that this is the true myth. It's encoded into what it means to be human, so much so that we can't stop telling the story. 
Um, and obviously, I would hope that our listeners would would follow the path that Lewis tread, where he said, "No, no, this is this is the the myth became fact, the myth was incarnated, the author stepped into the story, 